Woo, man, it is a crispy one out here today. We got the big winter jacket on for the first time. Everything is crispy here, look at this. And we got the new AMG. I'm sure you guys saw the delivery video. Finally, 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 we got a C63 back on the channel. We're gonna get a cold start here in just a minute. But before we do that, and I know it's been a lot of plugging of the Raptor giveaway here, and I'm still here whining about our Gen 3 Raptor not yet being here. So I was planning on doing a bunch of cool comparison videos between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3. I don't think that's gonna happen because God knows if our Gen 3 is even gonna get here this year and basically I'll be buying a brand new truck in 2022 that's a 2021 but anywho I have to plug it because it's only three days left today the time of filming is December 9th and the giveaway ends on December 12th so if you haven't already you've been sitting on the sideline you've been hesitating you have to enter now we're currently doing 15 times entries for every dollar spent at autoblog.com. If you live in the US, the continental states, or you live in Canada, and you're of legal age, this could be a Christmas present for you. You could be uh, the lucky winner of our 2018 Ford Raptor wrapped in bubblegum pink. It is, however, lead foot gray underneath. This is just a wrap, it's not painted, but man, this thing looks so freaking awesome. We did a little leveling system on it as well. We got some black rhino shredders on there and uh she looks badass so hurry up guys this might be it most likely is the last video before the giveaway is over follow me on instagram at autovlog because i'll be letting people know who won on instagram so if you're not already following me follow me at autovlog so again all you got to do is find some cool merch i know you're going to find some cool merch at the site when you pick something up you're automatically entered so you get some cool merch and you have a chance to win this Raptor. It's not like you buy a stupid ticket or something like that. You actually buy a piece of clothing or anything else that we have to offer in the store. Hurry up, autoblog.com time is running out. I know, I know. She's definitely not as loud as the 2012 that we had the coupe, but that's coming. I've talked to FI Exhaust and we got an exhaust on the way. Now I can't see anything, so as soon as we defrost her, we'll go for a spin. All right, there we are. Now I'm trying to do a cool little time lapse here, but of course the stupid GoPro crapped out on me. So this charger that we have available at the store was the first thing that I installed in the AMG. This thing is awesome. So this is a wireless charger, just hooks up to your vent or you can hook it up really anywhere. You get like a little suction cup thing and you have a wireless charging for your phone. One of those gets you 450 entries to win that thing. <laughs> Sounds so good, but <laughs> man, it is like three times quieter than the previous one that we had. I mean, that's unacceptable. That's why it's called repetitive content when we do this, because I love underpasses, I love tunnels in a car with a good exhaust. Now granted, the car doesn't really have that good of an exhaust yet. what I've always loved about AMG you have like in this case a uh, sedan so it's a four-door almost like a little family car it's got luxury amenities uh, you know being a Mercedes although this is a little older model and then it also has a lot of power so this badge right here 63 V8 is one of the coolest badges uh, I know I, I mean I just love it the AMG's are full packages they're fast they're good-looking uh, they're luxury cars. They got a trunk in the back. You can fit stuff. They sound good. I just, I love it. So, you know, I used to sell cars and, you know, you have this mid-cycle refresh in a generation. Like 2012 was the year for the W204. Now, this is a 2013, so that was a year after. And I always wonder, like, so what did they upgrade from you know, a, a 12 to a 13 in this model here. And it's always hard to find out unless you have super specific knowledge about the, the different model years. But the only thing that I've noticed is I always drive the car in Sport Plus. And as you can see here, the Sport Plus, hopefully you can see it, 
logo is in red. On my 2012, it wasn't. It was the same color as the uh, gear uh, selector light. They're white. And I know, like, completely boring information. Like, who cares, really? But these are the dumb little things that I sit and think about. Now, also, this little button here is for popping the trunk. That button is different from my 2012. That was more of, like, a, a pulling lever. This is a button. Now, that could be because my previous car was a coupe. I don't know if that matters or not, but the button's different. And another interesting thing with these uh, 204s, even the C300 that I had, the 2012 and now this car, the temperature gauge is always in between 80 and 100. So from a gauge perspective, it looks like the car is like overheating or running hot or whatever, but that I've noticed is just a common thing for these cars. So the normal temperature that they run at is, I guess, 90 degrees, but it's weird that the gauge wouldn't be in the middle. So, you know, because I've gotten comments before, like, oh, your car's like overheating. And it's not, it's just normal for these cars to, yeah. It's definitely a grocery getter. Yep, for sure grocery getter. We're gonna get into the uh, nitty gritty of, uh, you know, what it costs, at least for me, my channel. To, to run it and, and you know the the running costs with all the cars and that kind of thing but before we do that we have to head on over to my buddy Chad place wheel connection because uh, it, there's something we got to fix here on the f-150 so just in a few minutes here we'll talk about the stuff that you guys came here for cold start yeah baby This thing is so fast and it feels so weird to drive fast in a truck and I've said that many times before but it, it just does, especially a lifted truck. This is, this one is on lower, no, you know, big wide street tires. Now in regards to the exhaust and in regards to some other things before we get to uh, Chad's place here, um, I have an exhaust on order for this truck. And it's been on order for a while. It's just taking long and it's because of everything that's going on in the world with uh, just people don't want to work and uh, inventory of products in general, everything is taking so long. Like with the Gen 3 Raptor, it's just sitting because of a, a stupid microchip. And that's because of everything that's been going on. And also in regards to some people who's been waiting for their orders, you know, there's a, a few factors that uh, go into that. It's been high order volume. And it's also some items have been selling out and we've had to restock and there's shortages in like fabrics and stuff and you make t-shirts, that kind of thing. So I apologize to some people uh, who have you know, been waiting for their order for a while. Um, your order's definitely coming. There's no question about that. It's just that it's been taking longer for some people. I do apologize about that, but it is because of everything that is going on. Everyone is in shortage of product in pretty much every business, it seems like. So it just kind of sucks honestly but I just want you guys to know that you know if you've entered the giveaway no matter if you've had to wait for your item to actually arrive your entries are counted either way so don't worry about your entries not being counted because you haven't gotten your stuff yet um, everything is coming all your entries are accounted for don't worry now we're just doing a quick little stop at Chad's place here because we need these tires rebalanced I think some of the weights have like flown off or whatever I don't know if you can see this here on camera. It's always hard to capture this, but at certain speeds, like from 60 up to 70, there's a, a real wobble in the steering wheel, and it's kind of annoying. As soon as you get over these speeds, or you're under, everything is fine. So that tells me uh, that it must be a balancing issue. So that's why we're driving out here, taking care of this real quick here. Whoa, who? You see that? He was bearing into my lane. You better slow down there, playa. Anyhow, this is going to be a quick little thing, and then we're going to be back home, and... Uh, talk some payments all right so we're here at Chad's place shop got a bunch of wheels and stuff sitting here let me show you guys um, so this is I've shown this before but this is where he stores cars for other people as well but this is his 488 super nice same size wheels that I had on the F12 so 22s in the rear 21s up front and here we got Joe Hayden's rolls that's being stored here same with Terrell Edmonds Rolls. And like I'm not a Rolls Royce um, fanatic. I mean, I love them, they look great. But I don't, the models and stuff, this is probably like a Dawn. Who knows what this is? 
but it looks sick. Oh yeah, all blacked out like that. That's that's gnarly. But yeah, I'd pick uh, Chats 48 lowered, sitting on the right size wheels. Oof, it's nasty. I like these wheels. These are nice. Three piece. I also like those right up there. I'm not picking out wheels for the AMG here today because uh, I, I I do have a set coming here, but they look very very nice. And we're gonna walk over here to the widest street tire that I've ever seen, ever. So these are 405, 25, 24s. And the only car I've ever seen these tires on, ever, was a Camaro sitting at Marshall Goldman. Some of you guys might remember this. And some wide body Hellcats will have this too. Look at this, 405s, that is wide. <laughs> and here we got some 305, 30, 26s. So this, I mean, it's Cadillac, so this has to be for an Escalade. Look how big it is. It's my hand. Oof. Oh, crap, I missed that. Look at that, 28. So what does this go on? New Escalades, Denali's. Holy sh**. It actually goes And this is long. what, like a 20? 22. 22, so look at the difference. <laughs> 28. That's when you're a baller. All right, we're all done. In and out in no time. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate Thanks, it. Brother. Anything you guys need, wheel and tire related in this area here, Chad is your man. I'm gonna link his Instagram in the description. Time to get home. All right, so we're back home here. Everything is all balanced up and, and fine. But let's talk about some numbers here and uh, the reason you guys came to this video. So what does it cost me per month for all these cars, the Audi R8, 21 F-150, 2018 Raptor, and now also the 2013 C63. Now, we have the Danger Ranger as well, which is not sitting here. I think everyone understands that that thing is obviously paid off. There's no payments whatsoever <laughs> on that thing. It would be pretty sad if I had payments on that. So, secondly, the Raptor. Um, since we're doing a giveaway on this, I wouldn't be able to do a giveaway on it if it wasn't paid off. So I don't have any payments on this truck. Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. I actually did a video back in the day when we had just bought that thing. So I, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were now, but I put like only five grand down or something on this truck. And then I had a thousand seven dollars per month in payments. I always paid a little extra per month so it's been paid off here for a little while so zero there zero on the danger ranger and then we'll walk over here to the c63 um, and it's going to be kind of the same as with the truck here the amg and the truck are vehicles that technically i could pay off but i choose not to because it, it kind of digs into my pocket a bit too much for my comfort level i'd rather have more money left in my account so I actually financed, even though this is a cheap car, it was $36,000, I actually financed um, 26, I put $10,000 down. So this car will actually be paid off here pretty soon, beginning of next year, but I chose not to pay for it cash. So I financed, um, it, it actually ended up being like 29 or something like that with taxes and fees and all that crap. Put 10 grand down, the payment is $530 a month. For a little while now the f-150 this was a sixty-four thousand dollar truck when i bought it i put fifteen thousand dollars down on this my payment per month on this truck is it might be plus minus a few dollars here but it is eight hundred and seventy dollars a month i think so eight hundred seventy dollars plus five hundred and thirty dollars that's thirteen hundred dollars per month no fourteen hundred <laughs> I think it is. My math sucks. I'll add it up here on the screen. So $1,400 a month for the F-150. Hello. I guess my wife's leaving. <laughs> $1,400 a month on those two vehicles there. Now for tax purposes with my YouTube channel and everything. So, you know, the depreciation on these vehicles are a write-off. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was such a rookie. So I thought I could write off every payment that I made. It doesn't really work that way, except for with the R8 back here. Not many days left now, honey. I know, I love my pink wrapper. <laughs>
Hopefully her new Raptor comes in soon because otherwise she's going to have to be driving this thing. Or maybe the AMG. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Anyhow, it goes without saying this is the most expensive vehicle that I own. Now it's not as expensive as the F12 was. But this car was $163,000 when I bought it. I put $55,000 down. It is not a traditional finance deal. So this car is technically considered a lease. My payment on this car is $1,847 a month, I think it is, plus minus a few bucks. Now with it being a lease, the payment is a write-off every month for this car as I use it for my channel. I wouldn't be able to afford cars like this if it wasn't for my YouTube channel. Um, I buy these cars so I can make content with them, share my experience of these type of cars with you guys. I mean, that's how automotive YouTubers do it. And I'm extremely lucky and blessed to uh, be able to do what I do. So all in all, when it comes to car payments, I have about $3,200 per month in car payments. Now I pay for all my cars combined around $350 a month in insurance. That includes the Raptor, the F-150, uh, the C63, the Ranger, and the R8. So for five cars, I mean, it is a pretty good deal for, you know, obviously, obviously full coverage <laughs> insurance. It's about 350 bucks a month, which is actually a whole lot less than it used to be because I used to have the E60 M5. I had the first C63 at the same time. I had the F12. Um, I had my truck. I had the Raptor, which I was still making payments on at the time. So certain months I was paying like $7,000. Um, and it was working just fine, but I did feel like it's it's a bit too much Even though you know making content all this stuff. I didn't want to have seven thousand dollars per month in car payments And when it came down to trading the f12 in my I've explained this before as well my max was around 230 for a car. I didn't want to pay more and then it was a whole debacle with this car and, and being financed even though this is cheaper it was big mess that I was very frustrated about but the R8 is what I wanted and I now have it and uh, it just turns out that it's like two thousand dollars less per month because the Ferrari payment was thirty five hundred dollars a month and I was paid five hundred dollars more so I paid four thousand so I mean for me this is an extremely comfortable situation from you know uh, the revenue that the channel generates versus you know what I have to pay for them um, you know, I, I could have more expensive stuff, but you know, at this time here, especially with the prices for vehicles now, you know, even if I were to get rid of this car, I would probably make some money on it because of how crazy the market is. But then you're kind of stuck, you know, for anything else I would want to buy after that, that price is going to be higher too. So you're not really getting anywhere. A market like this is great if you want to sell something that you don't need. Maybe you have too many cars or whatever and you just want to sell something, you're going to make out if they're, you know, exotics or whatever. But yeah, I'm not in that position. So the R8 is definitely staying for a little while here. So is the AMG. So is the F-150. My whole goal with this truck is to trade it in on a Raptor R. And I already have an allocation. I just don't know exactly when next year that is going to happen. So yeah, there it is. Um, payments for all my vehicles with insurance around $3,600 a month. Let me know in the comments if you guys thought that that was around about the number it was going to be or if it was gonna be more or less. As I've explained many, many times before, the way I can justify paying this type of money for a bunch of cars, and I know it's actually not that much. There's other YouTubers that have four times as much in car payments every month, but this is my reality for my channel and I'm very comfortable with it. I'm happy with the cars that I have. I love them all. The next little build we're going to do is to C63 and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a huge thumbs up. If you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already and you want to, please subscribe. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.